Um, we know some of you are unable to attend tonight, so please know that we are actually recording this session. Um, we'll be sharing this recording and PowerPoint presentation with everyone following uh, tonight's discussion. Um, not only that, but our, we will also be posting it on our main webpage um, and also sharing the information with Dr. Hatchell and Ms. Schooler at the elementary sites so that the, those will be included in your upcoming uh, weekly newsletters as well. Um, this evening, we'll also be monitoring the Zoom chat box and answering questions as they come in. Um, at the end, we've blocked a little bit of time uh, to review some of these commonly asked questions with all of you so that some of you may benefit from some of the other questions that are being asked. So please know that will also come in at the end. Um, and then we know that many of you are beginning to wonder about this middle school experience. And we wanted to be able to support you with any wonderings and start building that relationship with you starting tonight and moving forward. Please know that the goal of this evening's information session is to provide more general information as it relates to the happenings here at Thurston. Um, so we'll not be addressing any like child specific questions tonight, but nonetheless, if you do have any child specific questions, we encourage you to reach out to us directly um, via email or preferably a phone call. It's always nice to hear a voice on the other end and we'll be happy to support you in that capacity. Um, that being said, we are here at the beginning of March now, and believe it or not, uh, the transition to middle school it will be here before you actually know it. And that transition is definitely an exciting time filled with positive emotions and sometimes a little bit of uncertainty. And so for those reasons, we are thankful to bring everyone together tonight uh, to provide some insight into this exciting journey and highlight some of those exciting things that we have here um, at Thurston. So to get started, I'd like to do some introductions. Um, tonight, I have some amazing panelists joining me. Um, Amanda, if you want to hit the slide for the next segment. Um, starting with our counselor, Mrs. Amanda Vanderveen, who supports last names A through G. Um, our counselor, Andrew Fredericks, who supports last names H through O. And our counselor, Aubrey McMorris, who supports last names P through Z. For our agenda, the, the next slide here, we are hoping to provide you a brief overview of what it's like here in the day of life of Thurston as a student and the various academic and general supports we offer all of our kids. Of course, also the importance of having a positive culture and climate, as well as a few things for all of you to look forward to, like our sixth grade science camp, which is amazingly back, as well as our sixth grade welcome day, which will come here in August. Now, a little bit about the day in the life. Next slide, please. The transition from elementary to middle school is an exciting one. Um, students will be traveling with their elementary friends and joining others to develop new friendships as they make their way toward Thurston as their new home. And there'll be plenty of opportunities for new friends, especially as we look across the numerous types of clubs that we host. For example, we have a forensics, um, jazz club, art club, theater club, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, embroidery, embroidery and crochet, book club, chess club, French club, ecology club, um, strength in numbers, model United Nations, the infamous nap club to name a few. Um, but please know that all of our clubs are student driven. So if there is a collective interest among students to start a new club, it can be done. Uh, there are also numerous school wide activities that are, are that come up throughout the year. Uh, for incoming sixth graders, we will kick off the year, as I mentioned, with our sixth grade welcome day, uh, where sixth graders will come onto our campus prior to the start of school year, uh, participate in a kickoff assembly, join in on various student leadership and team building activities, and learn about the ins and outs of our campus and the resources that we have to support them. And of course, we end the day with a nice special lunch with plenty of desserts to sweeten the day. Um, beyond that kickoff, we also hold spirit weeks throughout the year. Um, advisement cup challenges several times each month where advisement classes compete against one another, tug of war challenges or kickball tournaments as just a few examples uh, to help build peer relationships across our campus. Um, we also have a club rush, which helps to support our student elections. Um, we also have our TMS career talks where experts in various career fields come and talk to students throughout the year 
We have phenomenal par partnerships with the Boys and Girls Club that help facilitate sporting events or board games um, during breaks and lunches and numerous other activities that bring students together in fun and inclusive ways. Uh, one of the recent and largest additions at Thurston is our newfound middle school sports program, which is absolutely amazing. And it's a phenomenal, it was a phenomenal undertaking uh, to say the least, but what has added a really nice color and vibe to our campus culture. Um, some of those sports are volleyball, uh, basketball, cross country, soccer and track and field. And we have boys and girls teams uh, combined with sixth and seventh grade uh, teams as, and an eighth grade team for, for each of those particular categories. I'm a huge thank you to our district administration and our school board and our PTA for providing these amazing opportunities for our kids and to our coaches and phenomenal school band uh, who come out to perform at each of the games to add a little bit of excitement to the campus. We are also very thankful for the many wonderful facilities that we have here to host these events. And if you haven't had a chance to see our gorgeous campus, I encourage you to come out and take a peek, walk around. We have a beautiful new field, resurfaced blue tops, a brand new greenhouse, uh, the Zen and Butterfly Gardens, and many beautiful outdoor spaces where students can spread out, eat lunch with friends, or take a step outside of the classroom and settle into an outdoor learning space. Um, as it relates to enrollment, uh, Thurston currently has approximately uh, 515 students, and we have similar projections over the next few years, which means that our class size averages range around 20 to 25 students in some of the main subject areas. And of course, with our district being known for recruiting and retaining some of the very best teachers, you pair that with lower class sizes and you see lots of individualized and small group support or even an enrichment opportunities that are happening throughout our campus. Um, we're also very lucky to have the very best counseling to student ratio, uh, I would say in the world. Um, most schools or districts can't come close to the best practices ratio of one counselor per 250 students, yet our school offers a counselor for 170 students per. So it's a dramatic shift and it lends itself to a lot of one-to-one -one check ins with every student periodic student and parent information sessions, tailored small group sessions for students needing extra scoops of support with coping strategies, um, executive functioning, or even more commonly, um, academic goal setting. So on that note, this is a great segue to turn it over to our counseling team who can discuss a little bit more about our school schedule. All right, thank you, Mr. Vidal. Welcome parents. So that was an amazing overview of just all things Thurston. Let's take a moment to talk a little bit about um, some of those details. So we'll start with the schedule. So that's always a big one for the, the kiddos. They always are worrying about um, going to the wrong class or showing up late and keeping track of the schedules. Uh, but you'll be surprised how quickly they get used to it. Um, anywhere from three days to a week, they've got this down. So as you see here, this kind of breaks us into a week at Thurston. Monday, we get to start with all classes. So they'll start their day, have a couple classes and a break, a couple more classes, go into lunch, and then end with their final two classes and they're ready for home. The rest of the week is broken into block scheduling. Uh, this is, is wonderful because it allows uh, students to just focus on three classes at a time. So we break it into odd and even. So they start by going to their odd classes and they visit first, third, fifth, and then they rotate into the even. So focusing on only the three classes at a time allows for more in-depth instruction, more in-class collaboration amongst peers, and just students to kind of already demonstrate a level of mastery from the lessons just learned from the period. Uh, as you can see, there is an, it's a nice transition. Also, they have their first block, an hour and a half. In, in in their first couple, their first period, their first period or class of the day, they get a nice little break, and they go into their next class. They have lunch. They go into a thirty-minute advisement tutorial class, which we'll talk about, and then they end with their final period of the day. And if you shift over to the right, we have our Friday schedule. It's still a block schedule. It's it's, it's an even, but it has a late start, which you can imagine is very popular among students as well. 
so that first chunk of the day is actually used for our staff and our teachers to develop, to just kind of work towards professional development um, and just PLC time. But then, you know, we rotate into the regular 246 class. So again, our advice is have this printed out, have them put it on their binder um, to reference. Um, and, and I imagine within three days to a week, they'll have it down. Uh, we also, that first week of school, we'll have so much staff out there. There'll be leadership students, staff that will be um, supporting students, letting them know where to go, directing them. So they're in good hands. And our sixth grade team is so great and just providing grace. So uh, there'll be a lot of opportunities for them to master this as the year goes along. So one of the shifts to middle school is having different classes that students attend. So as you saw, they'll go to the different periods, which are different teachers in different classrooms with different groups of kids. So it's really fun. That ends up being their favorite part about middle school is getting to change classes. So they'll have their core classes and they'll have their elective classes. So we'll talk to you about a little bit about each of those. Another thing that's different in middle school is we solely use letter grades. So each class, will assign the student a letter grade. These can be monitored on Canvas, so students can access Canvas and it's break it up into assignments. So students, based on their learning and their demonstration of, of learning, they're, um, they're given points and those points kind of accumulate to the letter grade. Uh, and then we use, start using GPA a little bit more in middle school. Uh, if you haven't heard of the gold card, gold card is a very popular GPA based award that students get for demonstrating and doing their best. We also kind of use GPA when we look into getting students into the intramural sports teams. So to be able to participate, they have to demonstrate um, a GNA or GPA. The uh, academic special programs carry over. So if your student is involved in any academic special programs currently, those will carry over into the middle school. And then I think just one unique part of our, our middle school is, is utilizing that block schedule, that uh, in-depth learning and collaboration time, not only with the students in class, but then the late start Fridays that teachers get. It just, um, just creates a perfect little union and balance um, to allow students to kind of develop that mastery and teachers to be able to work together to support. So those core classes that students will be taking here at Thurston will be, they'll have a language arts class, math, social studies, science, and PE. So you'll have five core classes mixed with an elective. Some students have a hard time deciding between the electives, so we do have a way for students to choose both rather than having to choose between the exploratory wheel or band. They can do both electives by utilizing a zero period, which is a 7.35 a.m. start day, start time, Monday through Thursday. And so they'll have a little class in that little chunk, which opens up a spot for that second elective throughout the day. And then another thing on the schedule that we referenced is uh, that little advisement tutorial period. This happens Tuesday through Thursday, and it's right after lunch for 30 minutes. So every Tuesday is our advisement class. This is kind of almost considered a homeroom each student is assigned a teacher with a small classroom, and they really create a, like a lot of team building opportunities to really get to know each other. But this is also where students are able to get a lot of that school-wide information, participate in competitions against other advisement classes. Um, and then we can even use that time to push in other little mini lessons and social emotional learning and just more oppor opportunities to just get to know their classmates. A little bit more. So that's every Tuesday, right after lunch. Wednesdays and Thursdays we call tutorial. So tutorial is um, very special and based on a survey we just did with our kids, very popular. Students love this. And a lot, a lot of that is because of the, a lot of the students get choice. So if you are feeling a little behind in a class or you missed a lab or you need to make up a test, students can sign up to get support from that teacher. So they can sign up with a specific teacher to get help if they need it. Um, we also have the opportunity for, for teachers to sign students up. So if a teacher is wanting to support a student or seeing that there's their grade is dropped, a student, a teacher can actually um, invite that student to come and participate. 
So it's really wonderful to be able to have that enrichment or that support opportunities within the school day. Um, before that, I think a lot of our students would have to like use their break or their lunch to try to get those questions answered. So this 30 minute time chunk has been very beneficial. And a lot of times students are feeling pretty caught up. So we get to use this 30 minute time for enrichment too. So uh, some of our clubs are run during here. Uh, our PE teachers will put on little, little games that students can sign up for. So students get to choose where they want, what they wanna do. So whether they wanna use it for embroidery or game club or chess, um, or if they wanna get that extra layer of support. So advisement and tutorial has been a really great addition in providing not only academic support, but just support in connecting and having fun and being something to look forward to each week. And I want, we wanted to show you a copy of just the schedule. You'll pick this up on Wave Rider Day. Um, so you have, you have some time before you use it, but if you take a look at that left-hand column, you can see that's where the periods are broken down. So with this particular schedule, if you look at period zero, this student just chose the one elective. So um, they would start school at the normal starting time at 840. So you see no zero there. Um, you also see tutor, those are the tutorials. Notice the teachers Vidal, and that's because the students are really choosing where they wanna spend that tutorial time in. And then from there, you see the breakdown of the remainder of the periods. So if you look where those arrows are, it tells you what that class is, who the teacher is, and where it's located. Um, and then that last line right there is that advisement homeroom uh, classroom that they'll have on Tuesday. So just a glimpse, just a glance, a glimpse of what the schedule looks like. Um, on Wave Rider Day, when you go and pick up your schedule for your sixth grader, we'll have a bunch of leadership students there ready to give you tours. So they'll give you some cool little tips and facts about each of your classes and teachers, but they'll also be able to walk you and your um, student around to the different classes so they kind of get a little bit more lay of the land. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. McMorris. All right, let's get into what those elective class choices are for our sixth graders. Um, we have our wheel elective where students rotate through a pathway of uh, exploratory electives and languages or six subjects in the wheel um, and our band and strings year long classes. So like Ms. Vanderveen talked about with our block scheduling um, and our option for a six period day or seven period day, that's where it allows students the option to take whether they're taking the wheel elective and a band class or we have a lot of students that actually participate in multiple band courses particularly those that participate in our jazz band um, may participate also in a strings or a regular band class based on the instruments that they play um, it was actually really great we visited both El Moro and TOW last week. Hopefully your students told you about it. Um, and we brought along a group of awesome middle schoolers uh, with us to share with the fifth graders about each of these electives, about their experience in these electives, um, and to get to hear what that experience has been from older students, I think is so valuable. And you can tell the fifth graders really um, enjoy and look forward to. They always have great questions for them. Uh, we're going to kind of dive into a little bit of what the offerings are, but we will be sending out along with the elective registration information videos actually that each of our elective teachers has put together to give more in-depth information on content covered in each of these elective classes to just kind of help inform you and your student as you're making your choices um, for your elective class. But let's break down what these choices look like. So this is our elective wheel. It goes through six classes across the span of the school year. They rotate through art, French, multimedia, Mandarin, musical theater, and STEAM. Um, you will notice that Spanish is pulled out of the wheel, but we are working on a before, during, and after school option uh, for students that may want to uh, continue with sixth grade Spanish exposure. And it would probably look like a four-week extension, um, similar to how the French and the Mandarin um, are delivered, uh, but as an optional extension for them um, and allow them to really dive into these six during their um, elective wheel time. 
Um, we have formally had these wheels separated, but actually seen that uh, students really struggle with picking one or the other. Um, and so being able to combine um, these wheels and have an opportunity for students to have exposure to both the exploratory, the arts, um, and the languages has been um, really well received and, and really valuable. We're excited for our students to go through this elective wheel next year. Um, and then we'll kind of break down across the span of their middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth, what this looks like. So they would start in the sixth grade wheel uh, for their exploratory, going through the six different elective um, options in that wheel for the exploratory um, elective progression. So these are more your arts. Um, as they go through seventh and eighth grade, then what that looks like to continue in some of those exploratory um, subjects. For seventh grade, they would then do a semester long pair of electives. So we've seen some great value in students having voice and choice. And so this kind of starts them being able to have that longer semester um, dive into a subject that they may uh, be really interested in, but also offer them the opportunity to explore something they maybe um, haven't had a lot of opportunities to learn a lot about yet. So uh, in seventh grade, multimedia is paired with musical theater. So they're each a semester long. So a student maybe prefers, they're like, I really love multimedia when I did it in the wheel as a sixth grader, I wanna do it for a full semester as a seventh grader. Then they would also do then a semester of musical theater to continue exposure there. Um, or if maybe they really preferred STEAM or art, then they would pick that pairing and then that would be the subsequent semester for the year. Uh, and then that allows them a little bit deeper dive into those subject areas. So then by eighth grade, now they're going to have two semesters of choice. So they're going to tell us by eighth grade, what are your top three choices? And we do our very best to put students in their top choices for their two semesters. Um, and they would do, instead of it being paired together, it's kind of a free um, pick based on students' choice for that eighth grade year. But starting with the wheel to kind of help give them that introductory exposure to all kinds of different things that they've yet to get to explore um, in elementary school. Now they get that opportunity in middle school. And then for those that are interested in language, it starts again with that wheel, um, with that introduction, um, that cultural exposure to those languages. And then for seventh and eighth grade is really where they are picking the language that they want to pursue. Um, you can actually even take a a language starting in seventh grade and not have taken the wheel in sixth grade. Um, it's not a continuation necessarily that's going to support them. It will support them in seventh grade, but it's not mandatory. They they will still be successful in a, in a 1A language class without having taken that wheel. Um, so they would then in seventh grade pick whether it's Spanish 1A, French 1A, or Mandarin 1A. And then for eighth grade, they would do the continuation of that same subject. So they would do 1B, say a seventh grader comes in, uh, picks to do French 1A, then as an eighth grader, they would continue with French 1B if they successfully passed the course as a seventh grader. Um, you do need to take 1A of the language in order to take 1B of the language, because as you see, um, the progression actually leads to uh, ninth grade foreign language uh, being uh, kind of accelerated there. So what the 1A and 1B of a language are is actually high school language, foreign language, broken into two years. So if you imagine ninth grade Spanish one, semester one and semester two, that's broken into seventh grade um, of that language and eighth grade of that language. And then that sets them up then for their ninth grade year, as you see on the chart, to take um, the second year, jump into French two or Mandarin two or Spanish two of that language. Um, they do still uh, need to take two years of a foreign language um, when they get to high school. So this would allow them to go up to Spanish three or beyond. Um, but there are opportunities like for honors in Spanish too as a freshman, um, if this was something that they did pursue at the middle school level. And then our band and strings programs are phenomenal. Um, we have multiple different levels of band um, based on both the uh, level that a student may um, 
perform with their instrument as well as maybe the instrument that they play. So we do have a jazz band, two levels of a regular band class and a strings class. Um, if ever your student had a question about what band might be the best fit for them, they can always contact Mr. Wade um, and ask their questions, kind of share a little bit with him about what instruments they like to play, maybe what instruments they're interested in pursuing in middle school. Um, and he's really great getting students plugged in with um, our different bands um, or multiple of our bands. Like I said, we have several students that maybe want to take advantage of both um, and so do or both jazz and another one. And so they do take a zero period in order to um, do that. Okay, so now that we've gone through um, what the academic courses are and the elective options, the next step is going to be to register for um, your students' electives for next year. Um, tomorrow, you'll get a email through Parent Square, and it's going to have instructions on how to do this. Um, it's basically broken up into two different parts. You will register for the elective through ARIES, um, and then you will also indicate through a Google form uh, if your student will be taking a zero period or not. So um, Aubrey went over those, the two different options, right? The elective pathway and then um, a music elective. So let's say that your student really wants to take both and can't decide, uh, they could take both, right? And participate in, in both electives. Um, and so on that Google form will indicate that they will be taking, taking a zero period. Um, if they decide to only take one elective, then you would indicate that they will, they will not have a zero period. Um, and the instructions are also going to have uh, a link to the videos that the elective teachers put together. I highly recommend that you check those out because um, they made them fun, they're engaging, and uh, they just have a lot of information on the courses and what your child can expect. So if you have any questions or you're curious about one of the courses, uh, go to that link and, and check out the videos. Um, you'll have the week to complete this registration. If at any point you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out to us. So you can um, send us an email or just give us a call and we'll help walk you through it. Um, it can be, the instructions can seem like a lot of information. So if you have questions or you've tried to access the link and it's not working, um, just give us a call or, or an email. Um, one thing is for the Google form, make sure that your student is accessing that through their Chromebook. It's accessible through um, the student's uh, L LBUSD email accounts. Um, so now that you, oh, that's a little um, video kind of showing what it, what it looks like. Um, but I want to transition a little bit because we talked about, you know, academic classes and electives um, and a little bit about a, a day in the life. But there's tons of like transitions and first in middle school. Um, and we want to make sure that students are feeling supported, right? Because there's natural developmental changes. Um, so they're going to have academic challenges or they might have some like social emotional challenges. And um, we have plenty of options to help students with whatever they're going through. Um, so some academic supports. We went over advisement and tutorial, those 30 minute blocks of time that are built into the student's schedule on um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, we also have some really great uh, courses. So a math and an ELA boost class. Um, these courses are there to help students who might need a little bit of support in either subject area. Um, we use some universal assessments to identify students that have those needs, um, iReady being one of them. And the great thing about these courses is they align with the students' electives for the most part. So they will, um, if they do end up going into one of these courses, they would just transition smoothly in. It wouldn't disrupt their schedule. 
And then when they're done with it, they could just slide right out and go back into an elective. Um, so it's pretty seamless and um, a student can stay in it for as long as they need, um, but they're really helpful. We also have uh, co-taught courses. Um, we really believe in uh, inclusion and try to promote that. So if a student needs um, uh, support through their specialized program, um, we have co-taught courses that are available. I think that the homework club and after school tutoring is one of my um, favorite supports we have. I am always recommending it. It's available to students Monday through Thursday. It's after school from 305 to four in our library. Um, I wish I had this when I was growing up. I I, I probably wouldn't have gone, but um, I, in retrospect, I think it would have been so beneficial for me um, for so many different reasons. It's one, just a structured area where students can go and um, just get homework done. Like they may not even need support with the homework. They may just go to, um, you know, use that time to focus and complete work. Um, but let's say they do need help. They can go in and we have staff members from each um, four subject area, math, ELA, social studies, and science there to help out um, on very, very days. Um, and then we also have the after school tutoring piece of it too. So it's just a really robust support that students can pop into. They don't need to commit to like going for a full week, um, but they can if they need to. And uh, they get a lot of support there. Um, we also have plenty of online resources for students. So those are accessible through um, Beachport. Um, one I want to point out that I think is really helpful is called paper tutoring. So um, that is a 24 seven service that a student can log into and they're getting support from a, a like live person who's a tutor. Um, it's not like AI or anything. And the students I know that have used it have said that it's been so helpful. So if you have a, um, like your child's working on something and they're stumped on how to get either a problem wrong or a problem complete or get just the whole assignment complete, you can log on to paper with them and um, either upload the assignment itself or just like type out the question and the tutor on the other end will uh, walk you through it. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, we also have supports in for like social emotional needs. Um, so that's where we come in as the counseling department. Um, as Joe mentioned, we have really low ratios, student to counselor ratio. So um, we're able to give really individualized and um, intensive supports to the students. Um, we have our three full-time counselors here tonight, and then we have an amazing student support specialist as well, who's full-time on campus. Um, so some things that we offer are the one-on-one -on -one, uh, conferences with students. We meet with students at least once a year, and this just helps us kind of get to know them, um, understand what their needs are or what maybe their goals are for the year or just while they're in middle school. Um, the cool thing about doing one-on-one -on -one conferences is, you know, a, a student's teachers, uh, teacher support changes yearly for the most part, but we get to um, kind of go through middle school with them and be their point person, um, whether they need support with, you know, classes or they have um, a fight with a friend or they're feeling just overwhelmed and struggling with how they can deal with um, feeling stressed out. We get to be that person kind of throughout the three years and really help them, which is nice. Um, we also go into the classroom and we do lessons on on different topics in um, regarding like academics or social emotional supports or college and career. We do a um, college and career week, which is really fun and um, engaging for the kids. And then we also run like workshops and small groups. So we're kind of all over campus um, and and we have an open door policy for students to come in anytime they need help. 
Um, it's not just that one-on-one -on -one conference, but um, kind of anytime they need something. Um, and then for you guys as well. So if you guys have questions about, you know, the registration or, or you find out that there's a fight with a friend and you want us to kind of help um, your child navigate that or something else, feel free to call or email us. Um, and lastly, lastly, we have our peer support. So we have great leadership students on campus um, through our PAL program and our um, ASB. They're great students who um, just provide um, support in different ways. They, they organize and run really great lunchtime activities. Um, they put a lot of thought into those to make them both fun and engaging for students, but also inclusive so that everyone can participate and feels welcome. Um, our PAL students also have a peer mentoring program and they do um, an amazing job with students who need a little bit of extra support. Um, so it's really well-rounded with um, our peer support programs. So other things that we have on campus, I feel like at the start, Joe really sold clubs. So I'm glad that he sold all of my lines, um, but clubs are a great way for students to you know, get involved in and, and meet other students um, where they might not have that opportunity in classes, right? Um, thus, all of our clubs are student initiated and led. Um, so if a student has an idea for a club that we don't have yet, they can bring, bring that up and find a um, staff member to be an advisor for them uh, and then just go through the process with ASB to establish it as a club. Um, some great clubs we have, uh, art club, we have forensics is pretty popular, uh, model UN, and these clubs meet at varied times. So some will meet during lunch and then some meet after school. Um, in September, we have our, uh, club rush. So at lunch, ASB will set up tables and then each club has, um, like a representative usually, and students can go and kind of get an idea of what clubs, one, that we offer, and then two, a little, they get to hear a little bit about the club. Um, so they can sign up to uh, attend the first meeting and see if they wanna join, or at Club Rush, if they, they see a lack of, like maybe they go and they're like, I wanna start a running club, or I wanna join running club, but they don't see it, then they could start one. Um, but uh, Joe mentioned the NAP club, um, and it truly is like one of the more popular ones. And the student who started it, um, I think last year, the year before, you know, he, he was hoping that there would be a, a NAP club and saw a need for one. And he took the initiative to um, start one, find a teacher who would be on board, and it's grown into this um, space where students can go at lunch and just like decompress and get a little bit of quiet and just like rest. Um, and it's really cool to see like what he was able to create just based off of um, something he thought would be beneficial to campus. So I highly recommend that um, your children go to Club Rush and then if they see a need for a club that they want to start, then to um, go for that. And lastly, another thing that we have at um, Thurston, which is extremely popular, are our sports. Um, these are new as of last year, and um, the students just love them. We recently did our elementary school visits, and the leadership students were um, sharing their experiences with sports um, and just kind of shared how it's another opportunity to bond with with classmates that they might not naturally have a friendship with or um, may not know that well, um, just through their practices and games. And they even mentioned just like the bus rides, like it's this opportunity for connection um, and not necessarily just about sports, right? Um, but we have uh, basketball, um, soccer, cross country, and um volleyball 
and we have our boys and girls teams. Um, we have an eighth grade team and then a sixth and seventh grade team. Um, there are tryouts and then there are like weekly practices and then the games as well. Um, but whether your student's a athlete or um, is not an athlete, I highly recommend that they uh, go to a tryout and maybe um, see if they would enjoy the our intramural sports. Thank you, team. Um, our campus is also a positive behavior interventions and supports campus. Uh, so PBIS is a research-based behavioral framework, but in essence, it means that our school focuses in on behavior and teaching uh, expectations uh, to all students on our campus. And then of course, following that with positive reinforcement as they live up to those expectations. Uh, we use this digital platform like Live School to offer students digital tokens for their positive contributions in class and around campus. And those tokens then can be used at our student store to purchase items. And we also issue what we call smart cards, um, which can be used to, uh, to, for raffled prizes and that type of thing. And it's just another way to recognize and support our students and their positive efforts. Um, we also have daily recognitions called our student of the day where teachers recognize special character traits that our students exhibit, uh, which is read along with our daily announcements to reinforce positive behavior and a little bit of school-wide praise. And in addition to those daily school-wide recognitions, um, we also have several breakfasts and lunches set aside each semester to recognize students who have gone above and beyond consistently in support of our school and of others. Now let's talk a little bit about Science Camp. So here is something we are very excited to bring back to life, um, our sixth grade Science Camp. Um, beyond the natural activities that we provide, it's a nice way to bring our incoming sixth graders together. And it's an amazing trip to explore the outdoors. Uh, this comes around, I think, mid-September mid at the Pali Institute lo located in the San Bernardino Mountains. Uh, they have a plethora of activities, uh, squid and owl pellet dissections, uh, ropes courses, archery, night hikes, and most importantly, they have amazing facilities to rest for the after the long and studious days that we have there. Um, please look forward to uh, more information regarding Science Camp as the month of May approaches. We'll be sending information to all of you regarding the $270.5 fee which was dramatically reduced uh, thanks to a wonderful donation that we received from our school power to lower the overall costs for all students. And then we'll also be uh, sharing information as it relates to some of the medical documentations that will be needed for the trip. Um, for some upcoming events, so if you have a paper and pencil handy, great. If not, don't worry. This is being recorded. You can check later. But these are a couple of upcoming events that we want you to mark on your calendars. Um, and so we have our upcoming Wave Rider Day, which will be on Monday, August 19th, followed by what we reference is our sixth grade Welcome Day on August 20th. And then, of course, our first day of school uh, next year will be August 26th. One of the best ways to kind of stay in touch, too, I wanted to also let you know is our PTA memberships. So you'll be able to log in on our main website you will see that there is a way to, for you to join our PTA. And our PTA continually sends new letters and upcoming events about opportunities for our families to get together, uh, oftentimes including some of our fifth graders. Um, I know that Open House will be having this year too. We also welcome some of the families to come out and check out our campus if you'd like to walk around. That's another great opportunity to do it. But if you don't have time to do that, our PTA uh, membership is a great way to do that. It supports all of the programs and activities that we have here on our site. And it's a great way to uh, kind of read about some of the happenings that are happening on our campus. Um, so those are some great uh, opportunities as well as some social events that might be coming up. Now, switching over to questions, I know that we had a few uh, questions that popped up in the chat box. And so I'm gonna go ahead and um, read those out to the group. If our panelist team wants to pop back in and we can go from there. The first one that I see is one in regards to um, the elective wheel. Is it, do you choose just one wheel elective per year? 
Ms. McMorris, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. And I threw it in um, the Q&A box as well. Um, but essentially, the sixth graders will choose to do the wheel or band or both. And if they do choose the wheel, they do rotate through all six of those subjects within the wheel throughout the year. Um, as seventh and eighth graders, then they get semester electives. So the seventh graders, they have a paired elective um, semester. So maybe they wanted multimedia. They really liked that when they explored it in the wheel as a sixth grader, then that would be uh, paired with multimedia. Um, or if they really liked STEAM or art, maybe those two are paired then for seventh grade. As eighth graders, they get more choice um, in the two semester electives they choose, and then they would choose two of any of those four subjects. But yeah, the sixth graders that have the wheel, they do go through all of those for the sixth grade year. Hopefully that answers that question. We also do have one in regards to gate students. As the gate corner, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So our gate students are put into gate clustered math and English language arts classes. Um, this allows them to be with a group of other gate students and have opportunity for differentiation, um, whether it's through instruction with that teacher, um, whether it's through extension activities um, or extension lessons um, specific to those classes. Um, and then throughout the year, there are different gate opportunities like uh, outside of the classroom for students. Uh, we do individualized learning plan um, lessons. We do a fall and spring conference uh, with students. Um, and then a big part of our gate program at the middle school level, because we do have so many different um, student opportunities throughout campus, as you just saw, whether it's through clubs or sports. Um, we also have different academic um, competitions. We have spelling bees, we have math competitions. Um, we highly encourage our GATE students to find an area that they are passionate about or they want to learn more about and take an advantage of the different opportunities available to them um, on the middle school campus. So for that reason, they aren't necessarily forced into some of those activities or opportunities, um, but it's, that's definitely part of the conversations we have in those fall and spring conferences. Where do you have goals of getting involved? Um, and where can we help connect you with um, school involvement in the areas that you are interested in? And we do hold a parent gate information session um, at the beginning of the year. It's generally around back to school night. Sometimes it's the like first 30 minutes before um, the classroom rotations begin. It just kind of depends on how it gets scheduled for the year. So if you do have a gate student, look out for that communication um, early fall. Right. I see there's a question about um, 504 students and how they are su um, supported here on our campus. Maybe Ms., uh, Mrs. Vanderveen or Mr. Fredericks, if you'd like to chime in on that. Yeah, so um, the three of us are the 504 coordinators um, on the campus. Uh, if you have a concern, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can reach out via our email or just give us a call. Um, usually we will meet with you and meet with the teachers to discuss um, what you're seeing at home and, and some of your concerns. Um, and then we'll also hear from teachers what they're noticing in the classroom um, and put in some supports in place and go through the 504 process um, to see if they would qualify. Um, but if you have questions specifically about that process, don't hesitate to reach out. If your student already has a 504 um, and you want to discuss the plan before they start, um, you can also just shoot us an email. I also gonna, see... Oh, go ahead. Were you going to answer the zero period questions? I was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, so for when do kids choose their electives? Um, so you can start registering for those tomorrow. We'll send out a an email over Parent Square with instructions on how to register. Um, you'll register via ARIES and then also indicate for zero period if your student will participate in a zero period class or not. Um, let's say they just choose to do one elective and they're not going to participate in a zero period. 
then their school day would start uh, at 8.40 every day, except for Fridays on late start. And all middle school students do participate in at least one elective. So um, a typical middle school schedule, kind of like Ms. Vanderveen broke down, is a six-period day that is the five core classes and one elective. Um, so every student should at least have a one elective on their schedule. Um, and then that option for zero period gives them that option for a second elective. Um, if you have questions maybe about what combination of electives your student might particularly choose and it's specific to your student, um, please just email us the ones that are specific to your student and their options and their choices. Um, we definitely want to um, be um, attentive to you and your students' needs so we can address the student-specific um, situation um, ones via email or over the phone with you guys while you're registering this week. So there's a there's a couple of commonly asked questions around uh, sports and so when did those practices occur? Sports practices happen after school and you know they're typically twice a week. Although there are some times where there's a three times a week commitment depending on the sport. Um, and then uh, so that would and I, I see sports usually the practices are about an hour to ninety minutes after school. And I think um, for the wheel question, um, no, a student does not have to take band um, that we condensed it. It's a little bit different this year, so we condensed the two wheels. So current students might be taking um, both of those separately, but next year it'll be condensed for sixth graders, um, but a student's not required to take to take band. There is a question about bus services for uh, first and zero period. So we do have bus uh, services that are available for all of our students during first period. And then zero period is done based on your location. Um, you could look that up on our district website. It provides you routes in different locations. If you truly have a need based on where you're placed, you know, please know that at the, uh, at the beginning of every year, um, our district office sends out a survey saying, what are your needs? What are those locations? They take that information together. They make like a determination on what routes might uh, be needed based on family needs. So please make sure that you look out for that and share your interest if you are falling outside of that zero period bus location. And if you have any other direct questions in regards to you know, busing that any of us are happy to connect with you and, and talk you through that process. But it looks like we got through all, there's no remaining questions that are listed here. As we mentioned, we have our contact information here on the slide. Sorry, my video is still off. Um, our contact information is, is listed there on the slide. And so feel free to reach out to any of us and we're happy to um, either talk to you in person or have some exchanges via email to help support you during this important transition. Um, with that said, we'd just like to thank you all for joining us tonight, and we'll be sharing the recording with all of you and posting it, all the information that we reviewed today um, on our main website and send out to our uh, elementary principals to share that with you uh, later on this week. Thanks again, and have a wonderful evening, everybody.